Whoever we are, wherever we come from, irrespective of age, color, gender, health, or economic status, we have the right to realize our fullest potential for development. Intrinsically linked to making this a reality are civil and political rights and freedoms, for without these, the cry for development does indeed ring hollow. On this program, we will take a closer look at what happens when some of these rights are violated and the difference that exercising these rights can have on individuals and communities. The Human Development Report, published every year by the United Nations Development Program, uses a unique index to measure the progress countries have made in reaching a standard of development for their people. Reviewing the contents of this report gives us some idea of the inconsistencies and inequalities that continue to plague the human race as it travels down the road to development. Let's examine some of the highlights of this report and find out more about its index for assessing human development. For many advances in the area of human development, more children had an opportunity to go to school. Major armed conflicts decreased from 55 in 1992 to 36 in 1998, and malnutrition was at a record low by the last year of the 1900s. But if you think it's a pretty picture for a new millennium, think again. It's quite evident that the world as we enter the 21st century is one of disparities. Let's take a look at some key areas of concern to see what the broader picture reveals. The right of humans to be safeguarded from all forms of violence is an area that desperately needs attention. While the number of incidents of torture and major armed conflict may have declined over the last few years, the last decade saw 300,000 children used as soldiers and six million more injured in this strife. In 1999 alone, 87 journalists and media people were killed on the job. While war does manage to grab headlines, the less publicized threats to human security are just as alarming. Every year about 1.2 million women and girls under 18 are trafficked for prostitution. Added to that, nearly a hundred million children have little choice but to live on the streets. Education, which has the potential to alleviate suffering, has received much attention, with the combined net primary and secondary enrollment ratio increasing from 50% in 1970 to 72% in 1998. Still, about 90 million children remain out of primary school and 232 million out of secondary school. The ongoing battle against poverty is a major obstacle to realizing human rights. But in the latter part of the 20th century, it looked like we were winning. All the world's developing countries were able to record at least some success in this area. Yet, it is estimated that nearly a billion of the world's people do not have adequate housing, a hundred million of them being homeless. Freedoms, like universal adult suffrage, 
once just a dream, are a reality in nearly all countries. Between 1974 and 1999, multi-party electoral systems were introduced in 113 countries. But inequalities such as women holding only 14% of parliamentary seats worldwide are a harsh reality. And the fact that the last decade of the 20th century saw several countries revert to non-electoral regimes does not bode well. So what's to be said? Where do we take it from here? How can the disparities be addressed? The 1948 Declaration of Human Rights might be a good place to start. Tempering the developmental drive of the 21st century with a concern for upholding the rights of all human beings is the idea. Freedom from discrimination. Freedom from want. Freedom to realize one's human potential. Freedom from fear. Freedom from injustice. Freedom of thought and speech. Freedom to participate. Freedom for work without exploitation. Well, it looks like we're generally headed in the right direction, but the goal is still a distant one. While the progress we've made so far is indeed encouraging, the new millennium is sure to bring challenges of its own that will require each of us to try and make the difference. In short, human society as a whole should strive towards building a stronger commitment to universalism combined with respect for cultural diversity. In the words of Mary Robinson, the aim of human rights is to move beyond the design and drawing board phase, to move beyond thinking and talking about the foundation stones, laying those foundation stones inch by inch together. <laughs>